pleasant good morning. This devotion is brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. I am Archdeacon Hugh Bartlett, Jr., Rector of St. Anne's Anglican Church, New Providence, and Archdeacon of the East Central Bahamas Archdeaconry. On our liturgical calendar to today, we are in the eighth week after Pentecost. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance and asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 15, verses 6 through 11. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. After they, had been, be, after they had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them, by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And in cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. The discussion in Acts 15 centers around observing the traditions of Moses before one would be eligible to be a Christian. However, Peter had already experienced the work of the Holy Spirit among uncircumcised Gentiles just as the Spirit worked among the Jewish converts, which led him to conclude that God was not prejudiced and showed no distinction between Jewish converts and Gentile converts. Peter further concluded that the council was putting God to the test and placing a yoke on the necks of the disciples that they nor their ancestors had been able to bear. Our text captures that salvation comes through God's grace and not by the observance of traditions or any means that suggest that we can earn it. The letter to the Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 tells us, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Salvation is about our relationship with God, who loves us unconditionally and invites us to depend on him. Once we place our trust in Jesus, he has promised to prepare a place for us to be with him. Earth is our practice field. We cannot see God, so we must practice loving God by loving our neighbors as ourselves. Please remember, everyone we encounter today is a neighbor. Your miserable supervisor, your miserable brother or sister, and the criminal that has violated you or a family member or friend. By our own strength, 
Loving those kinds of people is impossible. Keep in mind Matthew 19 and 26. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. God bless each of us today with the strength to overcome any obstacle that seeks to impede our journey to love. Have a wonderful day and please share this devotion as widely as possible.